Hi everybody, my name is Sue and uh, my channel name is Sue Slims Down. Uh, I was invited by Carrie uh, from Weight Watchers with Carrie and Sandy over at Let's Get Fit with Sandy to be part of this collab of called um, Mind, Body, Spirit. And um, here are the guidelines for the for the collab uh, for our mind how how do you get your mindset into weight loss mode that's a good question for body what do you do for your body to help you succeed also a good question and soul the th what things make you happy um, do you have any tips for staying motivated and I know motivation is a big thing for a lot of people right now so let me get started with uh, the mindset. How do you get your mindset into weight loss mode? Well, a few things. First of all, I step on the scale every single day. Uh, weight Watchers does not condone that. They want you to weigh in once a week at their meetings. I'm an online only member, and uh, for right now anyway. Uh, I used to go to meetings and uh, I stopped going to meetings, not because I didn't enjoy them. Uh, it was mostly a financial decision. I just didn't have that kind of money to put out every month. So I wanted to stay with the program because it keeps me accountable. Um, but uh, I'm an online member only now because it's more affordable for me. And I think I told you in a video yesterday that when I lose 100 pounds and I'm... I'm about 26 pounds away from that right now. Uh, you're 28 pounds, maybe. I don't even know. I don't remember. Uh, anyway, when I get 100 pounds lost, I'm going to go back to meetings uh, for a very, you know, for, for some differing reasons, but I'll explain that later. So I step on the scale every day. That gets my mind going, and it's like the first thing I do when I get out of bed. I actually step on the scale about three times. And I log my weight from the lowest weight. Um, I wait till it it's at least 12 hours after the last time I had anything to eat before I do my first weigh. And uh, then I'll come out and I'll sit and I'll get on my phone. I'll check my email. I'll maybe watch a couple videos. Um, and then I'll weigh myself again. But I'll do my final weigh-in before I have any coffee or eat my breakfast. Okay. So, but that gets me thinking immediately in the day about how I'm going to handle food that day and uh, really what my goal is in weight loss. Uh, the other thing is uh, I watch YouTube videos. I watch other YouTubers that are on this journey too. And, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a diet, but, you know, really we are on a diet. Um, but I watch them and I, I subscribe to a lot of YouTubers that, uh, either make me chuckle or make me think, or, you know, always have good recipes, um, or just share their day with me since, you know, I'm widowed and my kids are grown. I live alone and I consider all the YouTube family, my, I, my family, I, I watch them to get inspired and to get motivated. And also, if I see their struggle, then I realize that, hey, I'm not the only one that's struggling. How did they get through it? And maybe I can get through it too. Um, another thing that I get my mind ready for is I sometimes will scroll through my old videos. Or not videos, but photos. Uh, there's one picture in particular of me that was taken in 2015 when my daughter graduated with her undergrad degree from the University of Oklahoma. And it was a family picture, and I I have never enjoyed having my picture taken. But that day, because it was a special day, and my whole family was there, all the kids were there, my husband was there, I wanted a family photo taken of her in her cap and gown. And I'll look at that, and uh, I actually did a duplicate photo of that so I could cut everybody else out and blow myself up in that photo. And that was the picture that made me realize 
I really needed to get serious about losing weight. The sad thing is, as bad as that picture is, I had just recently lost maybe 20 or 30 pounds before that picture was taken. So um, if I can find it, I'll stick it on the end here. But I'll look at that picture and say never, ever again. Uh, I try on clothes. Uh, sometimes, I mean, I don't buy a lot of clothes because I sew, but um, I'll go to, uh, like, Torrid. They just opened up a Torrid close to me and try on some of the, the newer clothes that they have in. Uh, I'm now in their smallest size, so that's good. It's kind of nice to see my size going down. But um, last Christmas, I bought a pair of size 10 jeans. I knew I couldn't wear them. At the time, I was in a size 18. And um, I actually tried them on a little while ago today. And they still don't fit. It's my goal to get into them. Size 10. It's a size 10 regular boot cut jean. <laughs> and, um, but at least I could get them up. Which is, I mean, before, I, I couldn't even get them halfway up my thighs. But now I, I can get them almost all the way up. I still can't button them or zip them, but I'm making progress. But I will turn, I'll, I'll do something like that. I'll try on something that I know is too small that I want to get into and just see the progress that I've been making along the way. And then I just touched on this a little briefly, um, goal setting. Every day I set a goal. Uh, some days it's like I am not going to go over 18 points. Or I'm going to eat uh, more protein than uh, fruit. Just something very simple. Or I'm going to go up and down the stairs here, an extra flight of stairs, just because. Something that I know that I can do that day and possibly the next day. I adjust my goals all the time. Like, for instance, at the beginning of the year, I had told everybody out here in YouTube land that... Um, I wanted to lose 90 pounds. Well, here it is August. I've lost 28. I'm not going to hit 90 pounds. And then I thought a few weeks ago, I think, well, maybe I can hit 45, which is half of that. So for a while, that was my goal. I don't know that I can hit 45 pounds by the end of the year. If it's taken me up until now to lose 28 pounds, I don't think it's quite 28. Um... But uh, I'm going to look at that and readjust my goal to make it so it's sustainable. Because I think sometimes we set goals that are too high and then we get discouraged because we can't meet them. And there's no way we can meet them. And the older you get, the harder weight loss is. You know, and I know that some of us don't like to admit that, but it's the truth. I can. It, it takes me four times longer to lose weight now at the age of 65 than it did when I was 25. It's just a fact of life. So, you know, it's I'm in competition with myself and nobody else. Although, I am kind of in a little competition with Sandy right now that she doesn't even know about because uh, our weight losses are kind of similar. And uh, I want to beat her to Wonderland. <laughs> I love you, Sandy, but I want to beat you to Wonderland. So anyway, that's kind of how I get my mindset going. Um... One of my goals, though, isn't weight-related. My one goal, one goal that I have is how can I be the best that I can be. If you take away the weight, what is it about me that makes me me? If does, does that make any sense to you? That you know, I guess my daily goal is just to be a better person than I was the day before. So. That kind of gets my mind going about you know a lot of things, but you know weight loss in particular. Uh, and I think about the my YouTube channel and how I'm preparing for that throughout the day, videoing my food, and that gets my mindset into it also because I show you guys everything I eat for the most part, and if I don't video it, I tell you about it. So, doing my YouTube channel keeps me honest and keeps my mind in the game. So, and I have said before, if you see me for, if you don't see me for a while on YouTube, you know, send me an email and say, hey, what's up? 
because it's probably because I'm going through a slump or something. But we all do. All right, let's move on to body. What do you do for your body to help you succeed? Well, I walk every day. I walk between two and three miles at least every day. Um, I don't go to a gym. Uh, I walk in the yard because there's a huge yard out here. I'm up and down these flights of stairs outside my apartment several times a day. I don't. I think I may have eight or ten flights into gate today again. Um, so I'm doing that. The biggest thing that I do for my body is I monitor what I put into it. Uh, if you saw my videos uh, a week or so ago and I was complaining about how tired I was, I kind of pinpointed that tiredness to the fact that I had been eating more sugar. So knowing that now, I'm not going to put all that sugar in my body anymore because it makes me feel terrible. And um, yeah, I wanted to get my weight loss chart up here so I could share that with you. Uh, anyway, uh, that uh, th those are the ways in which I, uh, what I do for my body. I just watch what I put into it. And I even before I was really serious about Weight Watchers, when my husband was going through cancer, uh, I became very conscious of the things we were putting in our bodies and how certain things, you know, made you feel. Um, but I was a sugar, sugar addict. And not, I can't say I was a sugar addict. I am a sugar addict. I love sugar and I love carbs. So, uh, but my body doesn't process it because my body turns carbs into sugar. Well, yours does too, whether you know it or not. <laughs> so that's kind of what I do with my body. I don't do anything at the gym anymore. I used to go, but never consistently. I'm just not a gym person. I enjoy walking. And especially out here where I am right now, it's usually so quiet during the day. I take a quiet walk with the dog, and in the evening, I'm out there, and the locusts are, are making their buzzing sound, and I'm sitting on the swing out there, and I walk around the yard a couple times with the dog again. So um, it adds up to about two or three miles a day. I don't do dedicated walking most of the time. Sometimes I'll go over to the park where there is a mile track, and I'll walk that. Um, but that, it just depends on the day. So the third thing, my soul... What things make me happy? Well, a lot of things make me happy, but I guess the things that, uh, as far as keeping me on track, first of all, I'm active in my church, and I'm getting more active. And I want to tell you how good that makes me feel to be back home uh, in a church that where I love the people and I know they care for me, and uh, I am able to share my talent with them and I can glean from them and uh, it makes me happy being in church and being around the people in my church and I spend a good amount of time in prayer uh, when I wake up in the morning that's the first thing I do and when I go to bed at night it's the last thing I do so and it doesn't have to be anything in particular that I'm praying about but uh, I do keep a prayer journal and it's nice to go back and look to see how God has answered my prayers. Uh, other things that make me happy, singing. Uh, some of you know, but not I don't think many of you do. Uh, I am a retired music teacher. I was a vocal music major in college. Um, I sang years before that. I didn't graduate from college till I was 50. Uh, I had all my kids before I went back to school. So, as a matter of fact, what made me decide to go back to school and get my teaching degree was after my husband was diagnosed with cancer. I had decided that if uh, the cancer moved quickly, then I needed to be able to support my kids. So, uh, anyway, I taught for 12 years in the public school system. I, uh, for the majority of that time, I, t I was the uh, high school choir director, and I loved every minute of it. So, uh, I love to sing. I also love to write music. I do, I've written a lot of worship songs for church. That makes me happy. Uh, of course, I like being in the kitchen. I like cooking. I like baking. And I love canning. I love doing food preservation uh, of mostly any kind, uh, including my dehydrator. Uh, 
so I like that. And it's a busy time of year for that too. Uh, other things, I like sewing and quilting. I like to make my own clothes. I like to make quilts. Uh, right now I am reupholstering a chair. I haven't gotten to the reupholstery part because I'm still ripping the old stuff off. And I think that's going to take me longer than what I wanted it to, but oh well, I have nothing else to do. Uh, I enjoy looking at inspirational quotes on the internet and seeing how they can apply to my life and also to my weight loss journey. Uh, and I share with those with you every now and again. For a while I was doing like an inspirational quote Sunday. I kind of got away from that. I might get back to that again. Um, tips on staying motivated. You know, for me, it's going to be different than for anybody else. One of the things that motivates me is the memory of my husband. Um, when Joe was alive and I lost weight, he was always so proud of me. Uh, he, even when at my heaviest, he never ever was cruel about it. He never made a bad comment about it. He always made me feel beautiful. And, uh, but he was always so proud of me whenever I lost weight. So I remember that. And I guess that's one way of me honoring his memory. So, I mean, like I said, it's different for me maybe than for some of you. Because I want him to still be proud of me. I want him to look down and smile at me and be proud of the progress that I've made. Uh, so that's one thing that motivates me. The other thing that motivates me is that, yeah, I'm 65 years old, but I consider myself a really young 65. And um, I don't really want to be alone the rest of my life. I would like to find love again. And like it or not, we live in a in a visual world. And I don't think that anyone would be interested in me if I don't look good. So that's another motivating factor for me is that I'd like to look good, you know, so I can be appealing to somebody else. The other thing is I want to be in the best physical condition I can be. So someday when I'm a grandmother and I hope that's not too far off, Emily, Evan, Andrew, Garrett, hint, hint. Um, I would love to be a grandmother and I'd love to have the energy to keep up with grandkids. I want to see my kids get married. Uh, one of the big motivations for me to join Weight Watchers was to get off my blood pressure medicine. People, I'm t I was taking four pills a day. I'm down now to two. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'm going to be to zero. But like I said yesterday, my for the second month in a row without meds, my blood pressure is normal. It hasn't been normal for over 26 years. So that's a big motivating factor. I don't want to have to take pills every day for the rest of my life. I've been taking them long enough. So uh, I think in order to stay motivated, you have to pick one thing. One thing that you really desire or that one thing you want to attain and keep that front and center. Um, I would like to perform again. I used to travel around and sing in a whole lot of different places and I stopped because I hated the way I looked. I didn't want anybody looking at me. And as far as, you know, being a good testimony, I didn't want to to go in front of a church and, 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 uh, sing and, and talk about things that, uh, when I looked terrible, I mean, that's just me. I don't think God judges us like that, but I judged myself like that. Plus I just feel better. I have more energy. Uh, I, I can keep up with just about anybody anymore. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm 65, so there are noticeable differences. But I think I'm a young 65, and I'm getting younger because of the weight loss. And on my birthday in October, when I turn 66, I want it to be 
one of the best birthdays I've ever had. Just because I want to be in Wonderland, a place I haven't been in decades. So, uh, I don't know if I told you at the beginning of this, but when I started Weight Watchers, I weighed 277.8 pounds. Somebody asked me the other day how old I was, or how tall I was. I thought I was five foot four. Apparently, I'm only five foot two and a half. <laughs> so, um, five foot three, five foot four was always kind of a gray area to me. But at, according to my doctor, I'm five foot two and a half. So I weigh 277.8 pounds. This morning, when I stepped on the scale, I weigh 204.1, which is a total loss now of 73.7 pounds. I am two pounds away from my halfway mark. Or not two pounds, 0.2 pounds away from my halfway mark. And I'm hoping I'm going to hit that tomorrow morning. Since I ate late, I might not. But, um, oh, I wanted to tell you too. The other thing that keeps me motivated is I log my weight. When I step on that scale every day, I log my weight. I have a chart in my computer. I log my weight every day, every single day. I can go back at this chart and I, what I like to do is I like to go back and look to see what I weighed a year ago. So let's do that while I have you on here. So this morning I told you it was 204.1. This is the 16th of August. And let's go back to 2018 to see what I did there. And this was after everything had happened in my family, after my husband and my son had both died. And I, emotionally I was not in a good place. I know, last August. But let's see what I weighed in last August. And I can even go back two years, but we'll only go back one. So I weighed a year ago today, 241.2. And you're thinking, well, gee, Sue, that's only a 40-pound loss in a whole year. Yeah. It's a 40-pound loss in a year. And there are days, I want to tell you, there are days I completely blew it. There, I mean, like, I had the mac and cheese thing going on in Idaho. I had it here. Um, there are days I'll go to the buffet with friends and totally just devour everything in my sight. The difference is uh, that when I have a day like that now, I snap out of it really quickly. And the very next meal, I get back on track. And... It's like a light bulb went off in my head saying, you know, you're sabotaging yourself. Why are you doing this? There's only you can change you. Nobody around you can change you. No amount of Weight Watcher meetings can change you. You can go and you can listen to experts. And it's just like listening to a good sermon if, or even a bad sermon. If that sermon doesn't speak to your heart or if that leader doesn't speak to your heart, it's not going to matter to you. And if you don't practice what you've learned, then <clears throat> you're going to fail. So you go to Weight Watchers meeting or like me online, I, I scroll down on the app <clears throat> to, to the extra things that are there. Like they will talk about what the focus of the week is, or I'll get online and look at it um, on my computer, what the focus of the week is. I'll look up recipes. I'll get on YouTube and follow the recipes and, or, uh, you know, look at things, what other people are doing. I make sure that I latch on to people who have been successful. One of the reasons I started watching Carrie was because her and her husband had lost so much weight. I thought, these people are successful. I want to know what they're doing. So that's what I'm doing. I And Sandy, you know, when I started watching her, she had lost 75 pounds. So I thought, I want to see what she's doing to be so successful. And I know there are times on my channel when I've had bad days and I've shared and I thought no one's going to watch me anymore because uh, I'm, I am a, I'm not a very good role model right now. And I don't know, a light bulb just went off on me one day and said, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors by being fat. Being fat is hard and losing weight is hard. Would I rather do the hard to lose the weight or stay fat my entire life? I mean, I'm 65, so how many years do I have left? 
If I lose weight, I'm going to have more. But I don't want... I don't want to be the fat mom anymore. I, I, my kids grew up with a fat mom. I don't want their kids to grow up with a fat grandma. And I think the best way for me to bring honor to God and to my, my late husband and even my son is to lose the weight and be the very best version of myself that I can be. I guess that's what really is what keeps me motivated. And yes, I have to pray about this a lot. I mean, I have to say, you know, God, please help me get through this day. And it, it, not just with food, but with everything. You know, a year ago, I, I told you I was in a bad place emotionally. I, I, I was in a bad place. I did not care about anything. Seriously, I did not give a flying flip about anything. Um, I didn't care if I lived or died. I didn't care what I ate. I didn't care how I looked. Um, and I can't tell you the exact moment when that light bulb went off. Well, I think I can because I connected up with a, with an old friend who who uh, encouraged me and and let me know that my life was still worth something and that I still had something to offer. I think one of the best ways that we can be happy is to help others. So that's when I really started concentrating on my YouTube channel. Maybe somehow I can help somebody else. I don't know. But that's what keeps me motivated, really. I, I just want to bring honor to my husband and bring honor to the Lord. And if dieting or changing my lifestyle is the way to do it, then so be it. Uh, I'm I'm not so laser focused that I don't go off the rails sometimes like I did last couple weeks ago with the macaroni and cheese. I don't go off the rails with pizza anymore only because I can't allow myself to be around it. It's just like when you're an alcoholic, you can't be around alcohol. Well, I'm a pizza-holic, so I can't be around it. And uh, I'm with D on the pre-portion pre stuff because that's what I need. <laughs> uh, I weigh and measure everything. And people think I'm nuts sometimes, but I don't care. I will take things to restaurants when I go. Like, for instance, when I go to a Mexican restaurant, I'll take a baggie full of a serving of the good things instead of eating the restaurant chips it's a conscious decision with every meal with every bite it's a conscious decision am i going to do the work to lose the weight or am i going to be fat so and as you know fat cells are eternal <laughs> and being a woman it's hard to lose the weight it's harder i think for women i think our metabolisms are just different and after you go through menopause it's really hard so, I don't know. I guess that's it. I'm I'm almost 30 minutes in, so I really need to cut this off now. So, those are the things that I do for my mind, body, and spirit. And just know that I couldn't do any of this without the people in YouTube land that I watch or the ones that watch me. They always send me encouraging comments because, you know, it takes a village. It really does. But, you know, we can listen to one another, but do we really hear one another? You know, that's, that's a good question that, you know, I heard that in church once. You're listening, but are you really hearing? And I guess it takes the hearing, opening up your ears and your mind and your heart to really be successful at this. Determine what you want and uh, go for it because... Every day that you delay is another day that you're staring at yourself in the mirror thinking, how did I get this way? I mean, I still do that. How do I, how did I get this way? Well, I think I know. So how do I change it? And that's what I'm constantly working on. I am, you know, I've lost as of today, 70, what did I say? 73 something, 73.7 pounds. And, uh, I didn't lose that by 
giving up. So whatever you do, don't give up. I'll talk to you later.